Hi everybody, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Prism Baseball full 12 box case, pick your team number two from jazbeescasebreaks.com. A very big thank you, and all card chip in this as well, a very big thank you to everyone here for making this happen. Appreciate it. So David, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo before we pulled the remaining teams for that randomizer, for that filler break. Um, so if you have a little rooftop next to your name, like Oliver does there, that means you won that spot in that filler. So thanks everyone for getting in. David ended up with Last Spot Mojo once again with the Rockies. And all card ship, which is great. And let's get this case here. Well, Prism, pretty large boxes in Prism, so the case is pretty big. There it is, 2022 Prism Baseball. 12 box here. Let's pull the camera back a little bit to give myself a little more room. So there, there's six boxes right here, six boxes right over here. I'm going to stack up a couple boxes up here just to make myself a little room. And here we go. Three autos per box. Three autographs per box right here. A lot of, lot of parallels. Tiger stripes and giraffe prints are going to be... Um, and there's hot boxes featuring the Carolina blue parallels. So a lot of stuff to look at. How many hot boxes are there per case? Speaking of the Rockies, how do they beat the Dodgers today, Rex is asking. Oh, that's cute, Rex. <laughs> Rex thinking that the Dodgers care about regular season matchups this late in the year. When they've got pretty much everything locked up. Come on, Rex. Dodge have bigger, uh, bigger fish to fry. And the Grizz will be saying all the boxes are hot. These are uh, these are uh, a pretty hot box. They could be pretty hot. I like the prism a lot. It stings at 0%, Rex. Dodgers have set a franchise record in wins. They've secured home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They're just trying to get healthy and be healthy going into the playoffs. Dodgers have bigger fish to fry, Rex. So stings 0%. All right, good luck, everybody. Remember, all card ship. And we got debut signatures, Connor Brogdon for Philadelphia. Brandon with the Phillies. First of three autos. Got Matt Brash, tier two blue. Not numbered, but uh, again, everything ships. And behind Sal Perez is Ronzi Contreras. Prism autograph for the Pirates. That's going to go to Brandon. Let's slide this up just a little bit here. Like the cards are a little far away. There it is. Tier 3 Ichiro. That's red. Not low, Kranich. 
not medium Kranich, but max Kranich. We want max Kranich here. We got Rhino, 005 out of 100 for Dwayne and the Cubs. Bobby Wood Jr., rookie card, nice. First of many, I hope. Who's got the Royals? Darren picked up the Royals straight up. Right, they have to worry about not choking. Exactly, Rex. That's the, uh, that's the kind of pressure that you have to play with when you're one of the best teams in baseball. At least we're not like your Cubs, Rex, who choked for, what, 80, almost 100 years? Before winning a World Series, they they may choke away another hundred years, Rex. So there's that. All right. It is Oliver's guessing Wander Franco. It's Edward Cabrera, rookie autographs, silver prism. Edward Cabrera. I know exactly where he goes. He's a Marlin. I didn't. Uh, that goes to Stephen with Miami, our third autograph. Hey guys, who sings that song? Every time you go away. Is that Michael McDonald? No, it's not Michael McDonald. Uh, no, it's... Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not Richie, Richie, from the Commodores, it's not Lionel Richie, <laughs> it's not Lionel Richie. There's Zach Reeks for the Rangers. There's Videl Bruhan to 149. A fourth auto. A bonus auto. Oliver says it's Paul Paul Young. I've never even heard of a Paul Young. There's Videl Bruhan for Chad Wright and the Rays. Every time you go away. You take a little piece of me. No, no one in the chat knows? No one in both chats know? I don't know how short printed these are, but there is one right there. Stained glass. I think they're a little more common in baseball. Has no one identified that song? Is it Paul Young? Well, that's what Oliver said. I don't know if he's right. Oliver says I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Teddy was, Teddy was incensed by my, uh, my Lionel Richie guess. I suppose now that I think about it. All right, that was box one. Box two, we'll do an autograph recap at the end of this as well. Paul, did he have any other hits, Oliver? Paul Young? Or was that the hit? Was it a soundtrack song? What movie was it on? The fillers are a little different from uh, from getting to the playoffs, right? Come on now. Come on. That's apples and oranges. Grizz will be saying Paul Young was Paul Young of his generation. A youngster. And that was that was it for him, huh? And not in a soundtrack as far as you know. Gotcha. 
My next guess, I think, was probably going to be Peter Cetera. But Peter Cetera did some song, but he did a song in Karate Kid. My other guess was, was uh, my other guess would have been simply red, but I think they did. If you don't know me by now, you will never ever ever know me. There's a Cody Petit debut signatures for Miami. That's Steven. Peter Tear right. Glor Glory of Love? Was it was that what it was in Karate Kid 2? Grizzle B saying Karate Kid 2. Was Peter Cetera part of Chicago? There's Greg Diekman for Dwayne and the Cubs. Dwayne won that team in the filler. Oh, so maybe these are a little more common than I thought, even though that's a red parallel. Stained glass. Another Videl Bruhan to 100. Cetera was part of Chicago. Saturday in the park. Think it was the 4th of July. Mark. Mark B. With the Red Sox. Ooh, look at what's coming up here. It's coming up. Remember that song? Paul McCartney and Wings? It's coming up. Bobby Witt Jr. Silver. That goes to... That goes to Darren and the Royals. I actually think... I don't want to get your hopes up too much. What's that? Is that a smudge on the card? No, oh, that's a smudge on the top loader. I don't want to get your hopes up too much, but I feel like the centering looks pretty good on this, doesn't it? Relative, relative to some of the other cards. Right? You can kind of see both sides right here, top, bottom. And prism is usually cut pretty well, so edges and corners are rarely that much. I, and I can't really tell surface, but... Pretty nice. Do, 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 do. If you leave me now, you take away the very part of me. Do, 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 do. I better stop singing, ladies and gentlemen. The singing's so good that that might, that might hit me with a copyright strike. No, I mean, it's Chris Bryant, Fearless, 28 out of 60. It's still Giants edition there. That's going to go to Jeff. And we got to read Detmer's autograph. That's another box with four autos. It says three autographs. That's another four auto box. Read Detmer's for the Angels. That's, that's uh, Fausto Castro. I think it's Daniel in the chat. Thanks, Grizzlebees. I know. That's, that's a dead on, dead on Peter Cetera. Ooh, nice. Daniel saying that he was at Reed Detmer's um, no hitter game. And there's Reed Detmer's again. You'll get this Red Wave card too to 99.
Kings had a bit of an up and down season, but that no hitter was pretty uh, was pretty cool. How many no hitters were there this season? Just that one? Because I feel like the year before there was like a record setting number of no hitters. And I feel like this season not so not so much. Yeah, the Mets had one. But like last year there was like eight or nine by the end of the season. There was like there was like one a month, seemingly. Yeah, I feel like Detmers had had started off season well, got the no hitter, and then was sent down, was not effective, and sent down, came back up, and was, yeah, it was maybe pretty decent to close out the season. Otani almost had that no-hitter. Did, oh, wait, did Otani didn't have a no-hitter, did he? I think he was close to one recently. There are too many no hitters this year. All right, next box, next three or four autographs, maybe. Let's Contreras again to one ninety nine. And we've got Cutter Crawford rookie autographs for Mark in Boston. And Mike Trout Silver. I wonder if Cutter Crawford throws a cutter. Someone look up his, uh, his pitch chart on Fangraphs. Yoni Hernandez, blue. Another Bobby Wood Juniors to base. And a key Brian Hayes. That's a cool looking parallel. 32 out of 35. Sort of a navy blue sort of background. Pirates, that's going to be for Brandon. And we got Connor Brogdon, debut signatures. Brandon with the Phillies. Wow, so Detmers was the only only complete game no-hitter, the, the, a proper no-hitter. All nine innings, all by himself. There's A.J. Alexi. Rookie autographs for the Rangers. It's for Patrick. But there were three combined no hitters. Sudeikis. Randy Johnson to 99. And behind Ty France is a redemption. Any guesses on that redemption for bragging rights? I think that might, this might be the first Torkelson rookie card we've seen. This goes to Detroit, Travis.
Wander guessing, uh, or Oliver guessing Wander. Wander's not guessing Oliver. We've got Edward Cabrera, rookie autographs. Another one for the Marlins. That's for Steve. Rex is saying the number of no hitters are going to start plummeting because pitchers don't stay in the game long enough anymore. Well, that's not a recent occurrence, Rex. That's been happening for years. And we actually had a record number of no hitters last season. So unless you're suggesting that there's... Not going to be a lot of pitchers used in the game long enough. I don't know if that argument really stands up. Yeah, pitchers not being not going deep enough. I think that's been happening for a better part of I don't know, pro probably a decade now. makes last year's no-hitter numbers that much more crazy because usually pitchers aren't alive. We, I mean, how many, how many times have we seen pitchers pulled from no-hitters because just because their pitch count was up too much? So kind of crazy sort of bit of circumstances last year. And there's Nick Fortes, 42 out of 50. Rookie autograph for Miami. It's another Miami autograph for Stephen C. Got Gavin Sheets. White Sox. That'll be for Evan and the White Sox. It's the South Siders. Hey Siri, Jose Siri. Jackson Coar to 100. Royals, Darren. Mmm, burgers. Oh, Jake Burger. Burger, fries, and a Coke? That's for Evan. Oh yeah, Teddy hit a color blast out of the, out of the Prism Baseball earlier today. Now, we did we did a pick your team case um, your team one is there a color blast one per case or is that is, is it even more rare rarer <laughs> is it more rare than that here's an O'Neill Cruz rookie class silver insert pirates Mitch Hanniger to 149 That'll be for Detroit. That's for Travis. Mitch Hanniger for Seattle. That's for Tamoya. We got a Freddie Freeman. 69 out of 199. Still Braves edition. Their illumination insert. And there's his teammate. No color blast in case one, but there was a lava flow. Okay. That's pretty cool. Let's see what we have in this case. It's Joe Ryan. Blue autograph. 
For the Twins, that's for Harry. Check that, Henry. Henry Benson. That's our... It's another four autograph box. Do these all have four autographs? It says three on the box. Colton Wel Welker, red, and an emergent insert. All right, next box. Yeah, it's just three autographs. We, we've been seeing a lot of four auto, four auto boxes. I'll take it. Oh yeah, sorry Rex, I missed that question. Um, Rex was thinking, was thinking about, about big name players or big prospect names that might be appearing for next season. Maybe players that we'll see in maybe next year's Prism. Tradiac, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, that, that Liverpool matchup was was not good. I thought the international break would kind of help them reset things, but... But no, it hasn't worked. I mean, you can't be... Drawing to Brighton Hove Albion at home. Stuart Fairchild, one out of five. Nice. Out of fives and under, get the train whistle. That's going to go to Walter and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Walter. All aboard the Big Head Express. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, you know, we may not really get a clear picture of um, we may not really get a clear picture of who might be called up. I suppose a lot of it could depend on you know the off season too. There's a Greg Diekman rookie autograph. You know, maybe some of those prospects get moved to a team that will bring them up maybe a season earlier. Just give them some playing time right out right out of the gate. It's Dwayne with that one. You know, teams that may lose some players might have some players being, players in the wings being called up. There's Peyton Henry to 60. And there's another Joe Ryan, rookie autograph for the Twins. That will be for, for Henry in Minnesota. John Gray and Yelich. Aaron Nola, Lime Green, 009 out of 125 for Brandon and the Phillies. Another autograph, Josh Lowe. 
Rookie auto for the Rays. That'll be for Chad Wright. Tyler Gilbert, blue. Say a Suzuki 25 out of 199 blue mojo refractor parallel for the Cubs Dwayne and the Cubbies. All right, another box down, another box to go. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I mean, has Cor how many games has Correa helped helped the Twins win? I think he was injured for a good chunk of the season. I'm I'm a little surprised he's opting out. But maybe he thinks he'll get a long term deal. Wait, are, so are are we all? Are all playoff spots wrapped up, or is is there still some games up in the air? I guess, are, are the Mets still in it? I feel like they lost those first two games. Well, they've lost three in a row now, so maybe, maybe they're not in it. Braves took over that, uh, took over that East. How many games are left, Tradiac? That's his Mets. His Mets choked. Yeah, they got swept by the Braves, and I don't think they're playing the Braves anymore after that. But still not decided. There's still, what, a handful of games still left? Is that the only race? There's another three or four games left for both teams. Three left apiece. Is that the only other thing that's left on the board? Is everything else decided? No, I think a wild card race still hasn't been decided. Phillies, Brewers, I guess Giants maybe are still mathematically in it? Or no, maybe Phillies and Brewers could flip-flop their spots. They don't have like a letter next to their name according to ESPN standings. So they're not officially eliminated yet. Yeah, I guess Phillies and Brewers... Bru 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 I guess Phillies and Brewers can flip flop, but I don't think they're playing each other. So we'll see what happens there. But it looks like everything else is uh, everything else is set. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm I'm reading this chart wrong. You're right. Mets and Padres are currently the wild card spot. So Phillies and Brewers are fighting for the third and final wild card spot. I'm not used to reading the uh, with the new wild card standing. I'm not used to reading this because two teams have plus numbers on the games back, and then one of them is nil. That's the Phillies who are in the third spot, and then two games behind are the Brewers. But all right, Mariners and Rays could still technically flip-flop, but all those three AL spots are clinched. Got it. And then playoffs. There's Anoli Paredes, debut signatures. Junk ball pitcher right there, <laughs> Jansen Junk. Matt Manning. I like what he does with his autograph. The M and the at symbol for M and at Matt. Detroit, Travis. Got a Julio Rodriguez base card. Matt Brash to 199. So 
So both of those will go to Seattle, Matt Brash, and the Julio Rodriguez, Tamoya. Juan Yepes, 22 out of 149, rookie autograph for the Cardinals. Dwayne and the Cardinals. All card ship in these ones, Tradiac. We'll, we'll usually say either way in our item description. And for prison baseball, everything's going to ship. We got a Jesus Sanchez to 35 and a Nolan Ryan Blue. Not number. Jesus Sanchez for the fish, Steven. And Spencer Torkelson for Travis and Detroit. And we got a Rodolfo Castro autograph for the Buckos. Brandon with the Pirates. Some nice pen shit there. That looks pretty cool. Hmm. And O'Neill Cruz rookie card for the Pirates. Oh, and a red Julio Rodriguez. Nice. Tamoya with the Mariners. Vlad Guerrero Jr., Lime Green to 125. Key Brian Hayes, Red. And the Jordan Alvarez. All right, another box down. We are halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, got about another 30, 38 minutes to go. We're at the 38 minute mark right now. Maybe even a little bit shorter. I might pick up the pace just a tiny bit here. Um, where are we at on... Uh where are we at on Aaron Judge Triple Crown Watch? He's still four points behind Luis Arias. And I'm, I'm assuming they have a few games left for each team. Luis Arias has, did not play today. And Judge went over. That could be that could be an interesting race to the finish. That could be one of the one of the end of the season sort of things. Last game of the season kind of thing. Isn't that what uh what famously happened with Ted Williams in his four hundred season? I think he had the option to sit out the last game of the year um, to preserve 400, but he said F that and played and then went like three for four or something like that.
Rex, come on, Rex. Rex read something where, where, where a judge hasn't gotten a home run in the last seven games. So you gotta, you gotta fact check things a little bit better here. There's Aristides Aquino. Did you forget about the home run that he hit three days ago <laughs> for 61? Red legs, Bill Bell with that one. Forty three out of one ninety nine Eloy Jimenez. That's for the White Sox, Evan. And oh Aristides was our first auto here. Shane Boz, Rays. It's kind of crazy to think about. If he gets the batting average ahead of Arraez, he lead, he'll lead the league in home runs, RBIs, batting average, runs, on base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, walks, extra base hits, total bases, and war. First to do that since Ted Williams. It's pretty good. I mean, that, that's your MVP, right? I think a case could be made for Otani as well, but I think it's going to be hard for voters to not vote for Aaron Judge. There's Trey Turner, Tiger Strike. Tiger! Tiger uppercut. That'll go to the Dodgers, Eddie and the Dodgers. Joey Votto, that's 99. Luis Robert Blue, not numbered. <laughs> there you go, Noel, you got it. Tiger! There's Brandon Marsh, rookie autographs for the Angel. That's for Daniel. And there's Lava Flow, Vlad Guerrero Jr. I don't think these are too common, right? That is for Chad Wright in Toronto. Uh, it's not, this is not exactly the best photo, right, that you want of Jake Myers. Like, he's just so out of position that he's... <laughs> That he has to hustle back there. Just out of position. Or he was in position and maybe that ball got roped. Either way, that maybe doesn't look good for the... For the there's Otani right there. It doesn't look good for the pitcher. Next box.
Do you think that the twins would be because Arias didn't play today? Do you? Oh, and he played yesterday. He went two for five. Do you think that they're gonna not play him? I mean, and 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 do play play that game? Sit him out at whatever he's at three eleven or whatever he's at, or three fifteen. So Aaron Judge has to chase him. Would that not be against the spirit of the game? Conspiracy theorists, react to me. Do you think do you think the twins will sit Luis Arias the rest of the way, make up a fake injury for him so he holds at 315, making Aaron Judge work to get to 316. Yankees fans, react to me. There's Rafael Marchand, debut signature for Philadelphia, Brandon with that one. La Mesa, where are you at? Del Mar, Solana Beach. I want to talk sports with you. There's another Greg Deacon, rookie auto for the Cubs. Claremont, San Diego, El Cajon, Vista, Rancho Santa Margarita. Let's talk sports. On the mighty 690. From Baja to the Canadian Rockies. 50,000 watts. Of AM radio power. <laughs> right, right. Pancho Pensaquitos. I want to talk sports with you. Storage to 149. Joe Ryan. That is for the Twins. Another Joe Ryan for Henry. La Jolla, talk to me. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. A, a, a titan of Southern California sports talk radio. Wait, Oliver, is is Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, is he still with us? No, I think he's still with us. <laughs> He's great. Oh, man. Noel reminiscing to the old Street Fighter movie. Jean-Claude Van Damme as... Was he... Guile? Yeah, he was Colonel William F. Guile. There's Jesus Sanchez to 25. That's for Miami. Now, usually I say, man, I don't like remakes, but that's usually because the movie was good. You don't need to do another version of it. 18 out of 25, Josh Lowe. Now, I, I mean, Street Fighter was kind of fun, I guess, but overall, it wasn't very good. It's Josh Lowe for the Rays, Chad Wright. Now, that's a movie that I feel like you can remake but I guess they did try didn't they try to do Mortal Kombat again and that wasn't good so maybe no maybe that killed killed a future Street Fighter project
<laughs> I know, right, Oliver? Well, when I do the recap, you can count. I feel like there is a number of them. There's a Vidal Bruhan to 99. Daniel Day Lewis as E Honda. There may be some objections on his uh, on his casting. Although, if anyone can do it, e <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis could. He can transform himself into almost anything, right? Yeah, that's true. In Hollywood, as long as you have money, you can make anything, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but to someone with that kind of money, do they still want to make Street Fighter? Yeah, there was a 2021 Mortal Kombat movie. I feel like had a really big marketing push. But yeah, and they, they, was this a three picture deal? No, maybe, I don't know what this was. Critical response, no, it was a little bit better than I thought. Ron Tomatoes approval rating at 54%. I have a feeling if that movie did a lot better, then maybe there could have been life for a Street Fighter movie. No, there hasn't been a good Mortal Kombat movie. I think they were they were, they were trying to uh, trying to make one, but I guess it just wasn't quite there. I think there's been only two, right? The one from the '90s, maybe, and the one now. Yeah, I guess. What video game movie? What video game to movie transition has done really well? Video game franchises that turn into a good, a decent movie. Except for Lara Croft Tomb Raider, take her out. Because I think, I think that's been successful. But like Mortal Kombat movie, not good. The 2021 movie, not good. Street Fighter movie, not good. What was yeah, that? Mortal Kombat was bad. What was that movie with, with Mark Wahlberg and Spider-Man? Max Payne? I don't know about that. But the, uh, the, Silent Hill was a pretty freaky movie. Was that from a video game? Silent Hill? The first Resident Evil isn't that bad. Hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. There's Eli Moore. I think these are the Carolina Blue parallels. I think Dune was a book first, Rex. Right? Or no? I don't think it was a video game first. Joe Barlow, John Gray. I did not see the latest Dune. Was Tron an original video game? There's Omar Narvaez for the Brewers. Or was it just a movie about a video game, about being in a video game? Did they make a Doom movie? Hmm. Oh, nice Carolina Blue, Julio Rodriguez. For Tomoya and the Mariners. But if so, I don't think it was very good. No, but there, I think, um, I didn't realize that the movie with Mark Wahlberg and uh, Spider Man um, was a video game. And apparently it wasn't very good. <laughs> the movie, according to the video game fans. A Nick Allgaier, 9 out of 25. Toronto, Chad Wright with the Blue Jays. 
Actually, okay, so I think the the recent Sonic the Hedgehog actually did do pretty well, right? In fact, I think they're making a sequel of it. Josh Donaldson, Tiger Stripe. Tiger! Tiger! Tiger Uppercut! Tiger! That goes to the Twins. That'll be for Henry. Herman Marquez to 75. Yeah, I don't. I feel like a lot of video game franchises don't end up, don't end up being good movies. I feel like another holy grail has been um, another one has been uh, Super Mario Brothers. I feel like has been a holy grail. There's 25 out of 99. Stephen Riddings. For the Yankees, that'll be for Matt Smith. Yeah, this is the Carolina Blue hot box right there. And a Wander Franco. We got the Julio Rodriguez Carolina Blue and a Wander Franco Carolina Blue. That is for Chad Wright and the Rays. Xander Bogarts to 99. Nice. Is there only, how many parallel hot boxes are there per case? I'm assuming just one. That box had a tiger stripe in there as well. All right, next one. Is that right? Was Sonic 2 Jim Carrey's biggest opening movie ever? And he was even Sonic, right? He was like the villain, I think. Mega Man. You would think they would make a good Mega Man movie. Did they try? I feel like that could be a movie that, if done right, Yeah, Detective Pikachu wasn't bad. But I think that's because it was really a detective story and not a movie about... I think that's what you got to try to avoid. I think, I think a lot of times they try to make it the video game. But if you just are in the world of the video game, like, uh, like Detective Pikachu wasn't about some kid wanting to be a Pokemon trainer. I mean, it was, but that wasn't the whole point of it. I do remember that, Rex. Yeah, the, that first Sonic, they had released, like, some images of Sonic, maybe even a trailer. Did they go so far as a trailer? And then everybody, like, this was one of the few times where... <laughs> A lot of times, like companies will release, like uh, here's our new logo, and people hate it, and then they change it, and it usually really doesn't matter. But, but I think at the end of the day, uh, they made the right choice on the Sonic the Hedgehog because it was just universally panned. And um, they took that feedback, and I think they just, and this was like maybe six months ahead of the release of the movie. So it was kind of a big task to to really kind of turn the ship. They had the movie done, right? Yeah, the movie essentially was done. They were months away from, from release. 
And I think they may have even pushed it back a few more months and said we're going to redo it. <laughs> Although, if they, if they even knew it was that, I don't know why they took so long. Maybe they did it and they were like, maybe people will like it. But didn't they do focus groups before that? Maybe the focus groups said they were okay. I don't know. Mike Bowman, rookie autographs for Oliver and the Orioles. 97 out of 99. Be more. I have not seen a one of one out of these boxes. Not yet, anyway. I think with a with a, a product like this, where there's so many, so many boxes and so many cards, I think the one of ones are going to be be pretty hard to get. Redemption. Oliver, you want to triple down? No, Oliver is going to say Edward Cabrera this time. His guesses were Wander before. There's Alex Degotti, 31 out of 75 for Houston. Raymond with the Strohs. Ryan Mountcastle to 99. All right, and the redemption is... Is Seiya Suzuki. Debut signatures. That's for Dwayne and the Cubs. Dwayne winning the Cubs in the team random, the filler pack that we did. I don't think it was a team random. I think it was just a filler. Top 10 teams, one stuff. Or top 10 spots, one stuff. One teams. All right. Next box. Rex had his chance, Oliver. The Cubs were just sitting there. He could have picked them up straight up. But don't look, Rex. Although he heard. Yeah, at least at least the debut signatures insert is a is a redemption. He may have just cards that are just on his regular on his reg on his regular base card. That's what I'm trying to spit out. Yeah, all those Diekman autographs could have been yours, Rex. Rex, you're closer to Chicago than I am. Do you just want to pop over there and say, ask him, hey, say a Suzuki, say a Mr. Suzuki. Why aren't you signing these cards? Mr. Su are, are we calling him Mr. Suzuki? No, we're not. We're grown-ups, right? I mean, kids may, may should put on the, put down the Mr. part. If you're an adult, you're calling, them by their, calling a ball player by their first name, right? Unless they're older than you? I don't know. How do you know if they're older than you? If they're a ball player from your childhood, you're definitely putting a Mr., right? Mr. Karos, or something like that. But I can call Clayton Kershaw Clayton, right? Spencer Torgelson autograph. Nice debut signatures. Rookie auto for Travis Melberg and Detroit. I think sort of a, a down season from his lofty expectations, but I'm sure the number one overall pick is going to be fun. 
There you go, Travis. A uh, Bobby Wood Jr. Silver again. That's for Darren and the Royals. Nice. See, this one you can see is a little closer to that side, right? I think the other one that we had was a. I don't know. You'll have two. You have two now that you can sort of compare to each other. Might be worth grading. It might be one to hold on to for a while. Uh, Willie Adenis to 75. For Milwaukee, that'll be for Brian. And Cal Ripken Jr. Blue. And a Zach Rex. 96 out of 99. Rex. That goes to Patrick and the Rangers. Ninety six out of ninety nine. Got a Spencer Torkelson here, rookie card for Detroit. Brian Reynolds Blue. Bobby Witt Jr. Red for the Royals. And we'll never be Royals, Royals. Ryan Villad to 99. It's for the Rocks, David and the Rockies. And there's Alexander Wells, 50 out of 75 for Baltimore. Bird team. Oliver with that one. 50 out of 75, Red Wave autograph. Sorry. The last little stack here, second to last box, the penultimate box. We got New Darvish to 149, Sandy Alcantara. And the U Darvish Red Mojo going to Dominic and the Padres. All right, final box coming up. Just want to look up really quick. Where are we at on on awards? The AL Cy Young favorite. And the odds as of October 2nd, 20, that's today, at a FanDuel Sportsbook, according to this website, has Justin Verlander as your AL Cy Young winner at minus 20,000. Next closest, Dylan Cease is plus 7,000. All right, I guess, I guess that's it. And they also have Sandy Alcantara at minus 20,000 with Julio Urias at plus 10,000 and Zach Gallant at plus 10,000 next closest. Now, these are just Vegas odds. They don't really reflect the, uh, the minds of the writers. But what does everyone think? Is that, is that fair?
Larry, I mean, are votes already in, or do they vote at the end of the season? I forget how they do that. All right, according to the same website, what about MVP odds? Aaron Judge has to be the favorite. Yeah, Aaron Judge is minus 30,000. According to FanDuel. But Otani's pretty, is closer than the other runners up. Otani is at plus 3,500. I think Aaron Judge runs away with it, or, or you know, or, or will it be close? As for the NL MVP, Paul Goldschmidt is minus five thousand, which is not as uh, not as long as some of the other odds that we've seen for the other awards. His teammate. Nolan Arenado is plus 4,000. Right behind him, Freddie Freeman at plus 4,000. I wonder if the if there is a, you know, and I'm not good with these these award type bets, but I wonder if there's some value. I don't really see value in betting the second place or the runners up in any of these other ones. But in the NL MVP, is there value in putting some, uh, you know, putting a little bit on a uh, Freddie Freeman at plus 4,000? If your argument is what if Goldschmidt and Arenado end up splitting the votes? They cancel each other out? That Eli Morgan, by the way, goes to Anthony. 99 out of 100. It's for Anthony uh, G and the Guardians. Willie Stargell, blue. We've got Romy Gonzalez, rookie autographs for the White Sox. Evan with the Southsiders. That's right, Oliver. Two birds with one break. You know how I initially read that, Oliver? I read that as two birds with one beak. That's how I read that when I quickly glanced at the chat. Jeremy Pena to 149. My bird brain. I had birds on the brain. Two birds with one beak. That was, and that put a weird image of a of, of one bird with of two birds with one beak. Ooh, O'Neill Cruz rookie autograph. Brandon with the Pirates. How weird would that be? That, that would be like some bird involved in like a nuclear disaster or something like that. That, that had mutated into two birds sharing one beak. I got another O'Neill Cruz, this time to 75. Nice little finish for the Buckos, Brandon Hall. It's Cal Raleigh. I think it was his walk off, maybe, that clinched the homer, that clinched the playoff spot for the Mariners. And Tony Santillian, or Santillan, check that. We're on to Cincinnati. That's for Bill Bell. Easy, Rex. It's a family show. You would be into that. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. We've got another full case break of Prism Baseball in the store if you want to check it out. Here's a quick little recap. Nice wander right there. Julio Rodriguez in that Carolina blue.
Looks sharp, lava flow, tiger stripes, some good penmanship, red Julio Rodriguez, red Rodriguez. That was out of five. Jaron Duran bought another Bobby Witt Silver. And that, my friends, then we let off with the Connor right there. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was a full case break of Prison Baseball. Pick your team, too. We've got some more in the store, so check it out. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye-bye.